Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, we're gonna go over some basic questions that a lot of you may not know. If you know a little bit about vehicles and you're more intermediate skilled, this may not apply to you, but I did have a lot of people reach out to me about basic questions that want to learn more about vehicles, more about automotive, and get a little bit of a foundation as to the first things that they should learn about their own vehicle. So we'll jump into the questions. Question one, how often should I check my tire pressure? Well, I think good practice is if you start the vehicle and you let it warm up for a little bit to take a quick walk around. I know every time I start my vehicle, I tend to take a quick walk around to visually check the tires. If there's one that's very low or almost flat, it's gonna be very obvious. You'll end up noticing the sidewall actually starts to roll over on your tire and you'll know that something's wrong. So walk around your vehicle, take a quick peek. Other than that, I would check them if there's a change in say, like a drastic change in the temperature outside. So if you're going from say minus 30 one day to plus 15 another day in Celsius, sorry American friends, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. When you go from cold to less cold, you probably wanna check the tires. In some cases, I've had a tire where when it's really cold and it goes warm and maybe cold the next day, where a little bit of water will get inside where the valve stem is and it freezes and it ends up leaking air out of the tire. So that's somewhat common if you haven't changed your tires in a few years there are ways around that put a little bit of hot water wiggle it around and you should be okay but that would be the first one i recommend is whenever there's a drastic change in temperature it's always good to check your tire pressure uh second would be maybe once a month or every few weeks. A lot of the time now you can get just a little handheld air tire pressure gauge and it's relatively quick sidling anyways. Go around, check your tires quick and then throw the gauge or tester back into your car and you'll be good to go. Now another good way if by chance Say you hit a little bit of debris in the roadway or if it was inevitable you drove through a construction site. When the tire gets pretty low, you'll notice that it starts to track a little bit differently. Not letting go of the steering wheel, I'm not telling you to do that, but you'll notice if you loosely grip the steering wheel, if one tire is loose, the car will start to pull to either side. So if you do notice that, what I recommend is pull over, check the tires really quick because the last thing you want is for the tire to get low, for it to chew the sidewall, and then you have a blowout. And a lot of the time, if it gets low and you drive on it, it'll wreck the sidewall and that's basically it. You need a new tire, you wanna avoid an accident. So tire pressure is very important along with the tire tread. So when you check the pressure, do a visual check of the tire and make sure that you and whomever you're driving with is gonna be safe. Question number two, when should I change my transmission fluid? It's gonna be very dependent on the brand of your vehicle, the manufacturer, if it's an early 90s car, 2000s, brand new. It's gonna differ, so it's gonna be a bit of a broad range. My rule of thumb is every 50 to 70,000 kilometers is gonna be a pretty safe bet. And depending if it's a manual transmission or automatic, as an example, if you have an Audi, say an A3 like we have. The dual clutch, I think it recommends it chain, being changed every 40,000 kilometers roughly. Now that'd be very important because I don't want to pull a transmission and I don't want to pay for it because it's going to be costly. Let's be serious. Audi is just a cheaper Lamborghini. But on the flip side, BMW pushes lifetime fluid. So for a lot of their automatics and their ZF transmissions and a lot of their manual transmissions, they end up pushing that the fluid is lifetime. Now, lifetime for them is somewhat subjective because it could be the lifetime of the warranty, right? And then say you're a year, year and a half out of the warranty and a lot of people end up going to the dealership for work. What are they gonna say? It's, it's lifetime fluid and you've run it bad to where the oil ends up degrading and it doesn't protect as much and ends up being essentially like dirty water at the end of it. So again, ZF transmissions, they say their lifetime, but if you actually go to the actual manufacturer, which is ZF, I believe they recommend changing the fluid every 80 to 100,000 kilometers roughly. So if you have a BMW with a ZF transmission, get on it right away, change the fluid. I've done it a few times where you drain four and a half liters and you put the amount back and when it comes out, it stinks, it's burnt, it's like black water, it's disgusting. So make sure you're on top of it. Last thing you wanna do is change the transmission. Not sponsored by this refreshment company. Question number three, why do my signal lights sometimes blink faster? So normally on an older vehicle that doesn't have a CAN bus system, what it means when say you're indicating to the left and it blinks twice as fast or a lot faster than to the right, it's telling you that you have a bulb burnt out. Now on newer vehicles that have CAN bus systems, when you have a CAN bus system, 
periodically it will send a bit of a current to each of the bulbs just to check that they're still operational. So a lot of the time if you're driving and say there's a crack in your fog light housing, you get a bit of water in there and it burns out the light. I think on BMWs it checks every four and a half to five minutes only because I've had an issue. It'll know when the bulb is actually dying or dead. So it'll pop up in your instrument cluster and it'll tell you. But on older vehicles, if it's blinking faster, say it's to the left, you know that the bulb is gonna be burnt out to the left. So what I recommend or what I would do is turn your indicator on when you're parked and in a safe location, jump out and take a look at your vehicle. So find out which one's actually not blinking and that'll be the bulb that ends up being burnt out. Every other one is going to be blinking quicker because there's a varying resistance now in the circuit. So blinks fast, bulbs likely burnt out or there's a poor connection. You could take it out if the bulb's actually okay and there's a connector issue. Sometimes you'll notice a little bit of corrosion that you can clean out with a little brass or bristle brush. Put a little dielectric grease and then ensure it has a good connection to the back of the bulb and you're probably not gonna have an issue. Sometimes you hit a pothole and the bulb burns out, it happens. Question number five, what does the exclamation mark on my dashboard mean? Depending on manufacturer, depending if the vehicle is older or newer, it could mean a few different things. You could have a mechanical issue with your vehicle. You could end up having a tire that's low. So a lot of newer vehicles that have a TPMS setup, it'll monitor each individual tire. So if one's a little bit lower, if the pressure is out of its range, it can throw an exclamation mark. Or on an older vehicle, it simply just means your e-brake is on or it's left on partially. I made the mistake in an ANW drive through where I left the e-brake a little bit. I think it was two clicks on. I started to drive off, I was wondering, while I was dragging, sure enough, I saw the exclamation light and yeah, I felt a little bit dumb, but I put it down and I was on my way. So it could be something pretty major or something pretty minor, but it does indicate that there's something going on with your vehicle. So just be a bit cautious. Question seven, why do I hear squealing noise while I'm braking? So there could be a couple reasons why you would have squealing noise while you're braking. One of the most common reasons is uh, the brakes are near the end of their life. So, and again, it's gonna be very vehicle dependent. Depending on the vehicle, and depending on the manufacturer, I believe, a lot of the time the brake pads will actually have a squealer pin in them. So once the pads get really low, it's a little piece of metal that'll end up screeching against your disc when the pads have worn low enough. So you'll still have braking ability, but it's going to squeal, indicating that they're gonna be a little bit low. Don't do what I did with my Subaru and end up bending the squealer out of the way the first time and then cutting it short and then cutting it right out. So I didn't wanna change my pads and I seldom drove the vehicle. It's dangerous when your pads get really low. This year, I'm definitely gonna have to look into changing the pads. With Brembo calipers, it's relatively easy, but it usually means you have a bit of an issue with your braking system. Another thing that could be causing a squealing while you're braking or as you're driving, say you hear a bit of a scratching, you could have as simple as a pebble stuck in your brake pad on your brake pad or between the brake disc and the pad or somewhere in the caliper. So if you find that you're driving and per revolution you hear a bit of a scratching, one, check to ensure that your, your dust cover in behind the brake disc is not rubbing against the disc itself. And two, it could end up being the pebble like mentioned. So a lot of the time, the way to actually get that out is to put the vehicle in reverse and hit the brakes a couple of times. Usually it ends up knocking the pebble or the little stone loose and that's it. It's as simple as that. Usually it doesn't quite creep up on you. When it's cold, sometimes it breaks squeals. It depends on pad compound, but again, that's not what we're here to explain. That's a whole other question that's probably gonna take a video on its own. Number one culprit, either a rock in your brake system or your brakes are getting a little bit low. Question eight, how can I save money on gas? I know everybody's feeling the pinch with the fuel prices nowadays. Just ensure that your vehicle is properly maintained. Check the brake pads, make sure they're not dragging. That's a pretty minor one. And uh, ensure that your tires are properly inflated. Other than that, you could use an app called Gas Buddy. Simply download it in your area. You can find the cheapest gas to you. Don't use the cheapest hole in the wall gas station. Still use a decent, reputable company. And sometimes you could save 10, 15 cents per liter. So between everything else, it could be just as simple as save a few cents per liter or for you American friends, a bunch of cents per gallon we'll go with. Anyways, you know what I'm getting at. Save a little bit of money at the pump could be the best case, but make sure your vehicle is properly maintained and 
check your pressures. So that's all for today. These will be basic questions for somebody that wants to learn a little bit more about vehicles to get their feet wet, so to speak. I'll continue to bring a few more of these. I think these are gonna be good for people to use as a good reference and to learn the basics about automotives and the vehicles themselves. Of course, if you have any specific questions, feel free to let me know and I'll be sure to include them on an additional or next video. That's all for today. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you.